Oh, you need bombers down, bombers down, bombers down. There we go, fish on, baby. Fish on. Look at that, we got a double in the net. Ooh, check that out. <gasps> oh, look at it, it's a giant crawdad ball. Oh, this thing is giant. Guys, welcome back to a brand new episode. We are out in the remote mountains, heading up to a small uh, mountain lake that potentially has a fish species in there that I've never caught before. Whoa! Of course, I've got uh, the tent as well as all the camping gear with me today in this episode because we're going backpacking, baby. Solo backpacking. All right, but well, let's go ahead and uh, get up the trail uh, just a little bit. We got a ways to go. And uh, then we'll take a look in the pack at some of the gear that I've got with me. I do have a military MRE with me that we can uh, eat as a little lunch. I don't have any water with me on this mission here, but I do have a water filter. And uh, the research I've done showed that there is a creek uh, coming down from the lake here where we can gather uh, some drinking water. Man, just check out this landscape. Everything here burned years ago, like so many of the forests here in the Northwest. Check this out right here. This is the trunk of an old tree and all that's left is just the ashes. You can still oh, see it doesn't, oh, no, it doesn't smell burnt anymore, but you can tell <laughs> this baby here has seen better days. Rest easy, old friend. Look at all of those new growth pine trees. That is crazy. It's a sea of green beneath the old burnt trees. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, I haven't been out in the mountains in at least a couple of weeks. I was out in uh, Westport, met a bunch of you guys out there for the tuna classic. Had a great time. We had a kid's trout pond. Everyone was catching some trout. We tied up some bullet lures together. That was absolutely awesome. I brought some bullet lures along, by the way, that we're gonna try and catch uh, these fish up at the lake with. But then when I returned back to the mountain fishing farm uh, from Westport, uh, everything was completely smoked in. We have been having massive wildfires in uh, the northern parts of Washington state, as well as Canada in BC. But then over the last couple of days, uh, it's been raining and it cleared up the smoke from the air. So it's nice and clear out again. And uh, it just feels amazing to be able to breathe clean, clean, fresh air again. All right, we're coming down into the valley and I hear water, so we should be really close to the creek to get some water. Oh yes, there we go. Look at this. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's way smaller than I thought. That's a tiny, tiny little creek, but it's okay. It'll do just fine for us to get a little bit of drinking water. Now make sure that you guys, uh, when you're out backpacking, just always have a water filter with you and have it in a convenient place in your backpack. You don't wanna have to dig through your whole pack just to get to your water filter. Uh, I'm fortunate to live up here in the Northwest where we have no shortage of water in most of these mountain areas. Now with this water filter here, you just fill it up 
kind of swishing it through the water. It's a little cumbersome. Uh, this guy here is the thread pattern of a two liter bottle or any standard like Coke bottle. So you could use those as well and fill them with water. That'd be a lot easier. Oh, look at that. There's uh, wild mushrooms uh, right here too. Look at this little guy. Not sure what that one is, so we're gonna leave them. There we go. We got a full uh, bladder of water here. Thought I just heard something in the bushes in front of us. Uh, oh, it's, it's a chipmunk. <laughs> I thought it was a bear or something. Oh, what's going on, Mr. Chipmunk? All right, screw our filter onto there. There we go. And then the first couple of drops, I like to just flush that filter real quick. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, brain freeze. Oh, it's such nice cold mountain water. So cold, but it feels amazing. But whew. I'm just trying to drink as much water as possible so I can fill my system uh, with water and stay hydrated. That's the most efficient way to carry water with you. Mmm. these mushrooms here. Ooh. These guys here are very likely edible. I can't 100% uh, ID them. I'm 90% certain I know which ones these are, but uh, since we can't tell for sure, I accidentally broke them off. See that right there? Yeah, these guys I'm pretty darn sure are edible, but uh, like always with mushrooms, we need to be 100% sure before we eat them. Gonna leave those little guys right there, beautiful. So that means that the mountain mushrooms are starting to pop. They usually come out somewhere in late summer uh, to early fall. So if we can find a couple of edible ones, we'll totally include them in the catch and cook. So we just gotta keep our eye out for them. Oh, down there, rescue mission. Look at that, an old, old beer can. The can is so old that it's like made of steel. Still, this thing is rusting. I don't know, drop in the comments, how old do you guys think this can right here is? It's like a pull tab can. <laughs> awesome. Or if you guys just find some trash, have a little spot in your backpack uh, or a little bag with you that you can throw that into. First catch of the day, baby. <laughs> I think we're getting close. I see a clearing out in front of us and there's water, there's water. We're here. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Look at this place. I, I already saw a fish surface out there first thing. Oh, oh, there's one that surfaced right there in front of us. Right there, you can still see the ripples in the water a little bit. All right. Okay. This area right here uh, is where the outflow of the lake is into that small stream. And you can see a lot of logs. Yes, Mr. Squirrel. Uh, there's a lot of logs here that are jammed into this corner. That's because when it floods, they all kind of drift this way and get stuck in this spot. Near outflows and inflows into lakes, that's, that's where fish love hanging out. The first thing that we're going to do before we just immediately start fishing is we're just gonna kind of get an idea of what's going on here in the lake. Just take a minute, uh, always when you get to a new body of water, to just kind of think about where would the fish be hanging out? 
Oftentimes five minutes of reconnaissance work at a lake can save you hours of unsuccessful fishing. We're looking for boulders out in the water, underwater logs, any of those things that could provide structure for fish to hide and ambush. There's one feeding right there. Definitely right here might be a good spot to start fishing. There's also, it looks like a deep drop off right there with some boulders that we're gonna go check out uh, as well before we unpack. And we gotta find a campsite. I wanna get the tent set up before uh, we got <laughs> get caught up with fishing because once I start fishing, I just don't wanna stop. Oh, oh deep water, deep water right here with boulders. This is mountain lake paradise here, guys. And I think I just found a good uh, spot for the tent right here. I think this here might be the spot uh, right there in front of me. All right. Now, if you can have your uh, tent as well as uh, your sleeping bag and your sleeping mat, all accessible uh, from a different compartment inside your backpack. That way you're not digging through all your food, your clothes, and making a huge mess uh, because this is always the first thing that you're gonna unpack uh, when you get up to camp. All right, this tent here does not have tent poles. Instead, it uses either your trekking poles or sticks that you find out in the woods as your tent poles, and that makes it a very lightweight uh, tent design. I've been using this tent here, man, pretty much since the beginning of my YouTube channel for all the backpacking adventures. It's a very inexpensive tent, nothing special. Uh, bought it on Amazon, but it's been working out really, really well for me. So what I'll just do, uh, as always, with all the gear that I use, the backpacking gear, the fishing gear, I just have all the links uh, in the video description uh, down below in case you guys want to check it out. Not paid by any of the guys, they're just Amazon affiliate links, so if you guys buy through them, of course, it helps out the channel a bunch. That's ah, cool. This branch here, all this fuzzy stuff that looks like, like a beard growing right there, uh, this stuff, uh, is lichen. What lichen is, is it's a symbiotic uh, relationship between algae and fungus. So it's algae and fungus growing together that create the stuff. And it's an amazing fire starter. If you guys ever need to start a fire, uh, lichen, whew, man, that'll catch a spark really good. Oh, wow. I just went to switch the battery on the GoPro and I just noticed the, uh, <laughs> the water filter was leaking. I didn't screw the, the cap on enough so it leaked all over the place into my battery bag of course that's the last thing that i want to have happen out here is have all my batteries die and then the video is over sorry guys that's it thank you for watching uh, the episode uh, we'll see you on the next one <laughs> all right guys i have a really cool surprise for you uh, in this episode this right here now yes it's a knife but this is not just any knife it is a Swiss Army knife, and not just any Swiss Army knife. <laughs> this here is actually the very first knife that I ever got. Like, I think I got this knife from my parents when I was like eight years old or something. So Young Life was running around in the Black Forest in Germany, in the woods, just making little sharp sticks and spears and gutting fish and doing all sorts of stuff with this baby right here. Man, I lost it in uh, some moving boxes many years ago when I moved to the US and uh, just recently found it. So this is the first trip uh, that I've taken this knife out on and uh, we're gonna do today's catch and cook with my first knife ever. Super stoked about it. I sharpened it up. It's actually amazing how sharp that knife stayed uh, even with all the stuff that I put that thing through as a kid. All right, so we're just gonna make a little little point here it doesn't need to be super sharp I don't want to impale myself on it but it's got to be just sharp enough to go through the little eye on the tent here like this and then we've got this line right here and a stake and we're just gonna secure that in the ground
All right, camp is all set up. Uh, I just closed the bug screen there just so no rattlesnakes get comfortable uh, in my tent. So I think there's a good spot where we'll start fishing. Kind of right here in front of camp, there's a uh, steep drop off, a lot of space to get our gear ready. Oh, look at that, there's a tree mushroom right here, just a little guy. All right. I am absolutely starving. Ah, so I pulled out the MRE. This is a uh, menu two, beef shredded in barbecue sauce. Uh, this is an actual US military MRE. I wanna say uh, this one's from 2018. So it is five years old, five years old. Let's hope that it still uh, is good. Ah, oh, there we are. Ooh. Now let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, what's inside. We've always got, of course, our accessory uh, packet right here. Oh, let's hope there's coffee in this one. Please, please, please. Man, I haven't had any coffee yet today. That'd be a savior. Oh, oh, I've never seen that before. In the accessory packet, there's barbecue sauce. <laughs> Creamer for coffee. Oh, there's creamer. Yes. B <laughs> Bill's brew. <laughs> oh, Bill's brew instant military coffee. I think we can claim this rock that we're sitting on as our outdoor kitchen for today. Now the water down here is clean enough to where, uh, since we're boiling this anyways, we can just fill this guy right from the lake here. Oh yeah. Perfect. There we go. All right, and I always like to bring a couple of uh, fishing poles uh, with me. That way I can fish a couple of presentations. Most of these mountain lakes uh, allow for two poles. Man, I'm so hungry. I want to keep digging through that MRE, but I just want to get one pole set up so that we're ready to roll. I'm just going to tie a uh, bobber fishing uh, rig up on this guy right here. There's a fish. Oh man, we gotta get this right. I mean, right in front of shore, guys, right there. All right, the bobber setup is complete. Up here we have our little slip float, and then here we've got our four pound uh, fluoro leader, nice and lightweight so the trout uh, can't see it. Remember, we're fishing extremely clear water up here. I've just got five small pieces of split shot, and the reason you wanna space them out on your leader versus clump them all together in one spot is so that it casts more evenly. If they're clumped up in one spot, uh, it'll often tangle up your line. If you space them out, uh, odds are the leader will cast a little bit better. And then down here on the business end, we've got a little itty bitty tiny mosquito hook. And uh, one thing I don't have is bait. So we're gonna have to find some natural bait up here in the mountains. But first, let's make this coffee. Oh, Bill's Brew, here we go. Look at that. All right, a nice fine particulate in there. There we go, there we go. Oh, look at that change, the color so beautifully. Perfect. Right, let's get that creamer in there. All the way, baby. <laughs> no man left behind. Oh. oh, oh, it's perfect. Look at that. Now this is still piping hot, so we're gonna let that cool for just one second. And we're gonna see what else we have inside this military mystery bag. So right here, uh, it looks like this is our main dish. That's our our pulled beef right there. <laughs> and then, what is this? Oatmeal chocolate chunk cookie. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Number one ingredient, sugar. <laughs> 
Not even flower. I mean, they're not even hiding it. They're not even hiding it, guys. <laughs> it's just... Oh, look at this, though. Oh, man, that's... <laughs> A little dry, but good. That's going to be really good with the coffee. Ooh, cheese spread with jalapenos. What is this? Oh, tortillas. Oh, that's weird. There's another entree. Oh, this one, there says shredded beef. This is black beans in sea, soy. Black beans in, I don't know, black beans in something. Mm. And then like a beverage uh, base powder that's like a, essentially like powdered Gatorade or something. Nice high quality spoon. All right, now here we've got our uh, flameless uh, heater. I have so far not gotten one of these heaters uh, to heat up. I've tried, I've looked at other videos of other people doing uh, the same thing as me and it's just, there's like immediately start boiling. <laughs> and uh, these ones here, I've experimented with different amounts of water for them. And uh, it seems like they're just dead uh, because of how old they are. There we go. What we've got here is a cardboard pouch that we're supposed to place this into. Yeah, it's not even getting warm. <laughs> it's probably a dud as well, just like the rest of them. And what we're just gonna do is we're gonna set it up against the backpack like that, leaned at a, about a 45 degree angle. Guys, are you ready to start fishing? I am, I am so stoked to fish this lake here. interesting <laughs> maybe the the creamer powder for the coffee might have gotten a little rancid or something it's a little or maybe it's just the military coffee i don't know <laughs> mm. 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 i just saw the actual fish swimming underwater looked about that big small very silvery looking and that is exactly what I'm looking for. So the species that we're gonna try and catch up here at this lake is called a kokanee. I've never caught a kokanee before in my life. What a kokanee is, is a landlocked freshwater salmon. It's a sockeye salmon, and we're gonna try and catch one. They look exactly like a trout. Oh, oh, there's a big one out there. I mean, the head on that fish was this big. Guys, there's monsters in here. Mm. Mm. All right. There's a tiny, tiny little chipmunk down here. Look at him. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. But he just ran away though. I'm gonna set our gear here and uh, I'm just gonna start looking in the water here for the bait that we're gonna try and get. We're just gonna flip over some little pieces of wood, look underneath some rocks. Oh, there's a tiny one. Oh, he's gone, he's gone. There was a little itty bitty one. Some of you guys might already know what I'm looking for. Oh, there's a bigger one. Bigger one, look at that. See that little guy right there? There he goes, there he goes. Look at that little guy, he's a cutie. It's a dragonfly larva. This is what a dragonfly looks like before they get their wings when they still live underwater. Here we go, baby, bobber rod. Dragonfly larva, little, I mean, little small dragonfly larva. There we go. Just pop him. There he is. Oh, oh, there's one that surfaced right there. All right. Whew, man, things could get really wild really fast with this many fish. You keep your eyes on that bobber there and I'm gonna go get the other pole uh, ready with the bullet lure so we can fish two setups. I've got a really good feeling about this though.
Oh, bobber's down, bobber's down, bobber's down. Oh, wait for him to go down all the way. There we go, fish on, baby. Fish on. Oh, oh, good one. Good, just a good fighter. Good fighter, guys. I just grabbed the, the chesty rig for the, the other rod. Oh my, oh, oh, it's a trout. In the net, in the net, there go. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful west slope cutthroat trout. There's another one right there. I mean, they're still surfacing. All right, first thing we did was just put this little guy right out of his misery, but check it out. This is a uh, beautiful west slope cutthroat trout. Uh, you can tell it's a cutthroat by the red marking that they have right down here underneath their lower jaw. And you can tell it's a west slope because they only have the black spots up here on their back and on their tail. And they usually have a very beautiful kind of a pinkish belly. Oh man, thank you buddy for providing a wonderful meal for us. He absolutely inhaled that dragonfly larva. I mean, <laughs> that hook is way down there. He wouldn't have made it anyways. All right, so I just got the hook out and it still has the front end of the dragonfly larva on there. Maybe we can see if we can catch one <laughs> with just the dragonfly larva head. What about that? That'd be a fun challenge. We're just gonna cast that out there while we uh, try out the bullet lure. Oh, they're jumping right over there. There we go. Bobber can hang out uh, over in this spot here. Oh, oh, there's a crawdad down here. Look at that. He's a big one too. He's a big one. I was just going to set the fish there to keep him cool, but we probably don't want the fish in the water if there's crawdads right here. Let's see if we can catch them. Oh, got him, got him, baby, big crawdad. Now he's red in color, uh, which is interesting. Maybe that's a spawning color or something like that for our native species, the signal crayfish. Not exactly sure. Usually they don't turn red until after you cook them. Either way, we're gonna keep this guy here and, <laughs> and we're gonna cook him up with our trout. I had no idea that there were gonna be crawdads in this lake as well, but he, I mean, he was right there. We're gonna set our trout right there in the water. That way maybe the smell will draw in some more crawdads. I'd say this guy here just goes right in the pot. There we go, crawdad in the coffee pot. <laughs> oh, there's another one right there. And where did the bullet lure go? I had it, <gasps> I dropped it in the water. It's right here. Oh no, come here bullet lure. Very deep right there. There we go. Brand new, fresh bullet lure. All right, first cast with the bullet lure. Oh yeah, nice casting distance. And these fish here, we're, we're gonna do a faster retrieve. These are a mountain trout. They wanna chase something. Oh, come on, baby. All right, nothing on the first one. That's okay. Oh, there's a crawdad right down there too. Right there, right there by my thumb, that little red spot. There's a crawdad coming in probably for that trout there. It worked, he smells them. That's another big one, guys. So what we can actually do, this is risky, this is risky, but we can try and get him with the bullet lure. Oh, he, he's going after it. He's going after it. Come on, baby. There we go, got him, got him. <laughs> Caught out on the bull lure. <laughs> I've never done that before. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. He can go right over here to his buddy. <laughs> Look at, oh man, he is totally gonna pinch us. Oh, there we go. Got the lure out and into the pot he goes. <laughs> with his friend. There we go. That's two crawdads in the pot already. Man, crawdad on the bullet lure. That's a first. 
<laughs> that is just absolutely crazy. Okay, so what I wanted to do though, uh, was fish right here where those trout were just jumping and uh, there's some big boulders right underwater and that's where the drop off is. And I'm gonna try and fish the drop off is what we're gonna do. All right, let's give this a try. Oh, right there, perfect, 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 perfect. Let it sink for one second. There we go. And retrieve them. Come on, baby. Come on. Gotta be a hungry trout looking at it. Gotta be a hungry trout. Oh, there you go, fish on, baby. On the bullet lure. Oni, what happened? What, oh, what? Nope, it was a rock. <laughs> it was a rock. It was a rock. It totally felt like a fish though. I fought him too. I fought that rock like it, like it mattered. Just make sure our hook is still, still sharp. Every time we got snagged up on a rock like that, you just want to make sure. Let's try that over there again. I can't believe that one didn't bite. There we go, good spot back there. Very good spot. Oh, something's on the bobber. Something's on the bobber. Something's on the bobber. It's, oh, oh no, 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 we're tangled up. We're totally tangled. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh man, we are completely tangled, you guys. Completely tangled. Oh, I think it came off again. I think it came off. Oh, we missed him. We missed him. We were, oh, wow. Probably good we didn't hook up anyways because we're totally tangled around this uh, tree right here. Uh-oh. That's no good. Come on, please, please, please. No, 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 no. Got stuck. Ah, oh, man, I was so hoping that wouldn't happen right there. All right, we got to just pull it. Oh wow, we got everything back. We got everything back. Just bent the hook open a little bit. That's all right. This hook here is compromised uh, because it got bent. So we're gonna start with a fresh uh, hook. We never wanna fish with one uh, that we can't 100% trust. Don't wanna lose a big one just because the hook breaks. <gasps> big crawdad right there. Big one, he got away from us. Oh, there's another one, there's another one. See him right down there? Oh, oh, oh. Come on, baby. Oh, no, there he goes. There's a grasshopper right here in the water. Now, I've never done this before, but maybe we could fish that under the bobber. There you go. <laughs> this guy here should wiggle around a bunch. All right, grasshopper under the bobber. <laughs> okay, he's way out there. Perfect. Okay, let's try some more casts with the bullet lure. Definitely got to get one on the bullet lure. I'm seeing so many trout, there's no way one of them won't take it. What if we cast out here into the deeper water and just let the lure sink a little bit? Let's fish down closer to the bottom. Let's see, we're sinking, 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 still sinking, still sinking. Very risky to go all the way to the bottom. Still sinking. Oh, we're at the bottom. Okay, so it's not super deep. Maybe 30 feet or so, 20 feet. Let's see, we're down low, so maybe let's do a slow, slow retrieve down at the bottom. Oh, maybe a bite. Was that, oh. No, I think I'm just dragging the bottom. Oh, yeah, dragging the bottom, I think. Oh no, that's a fish, that's a fish on, oh, baby. Right in front of us, right in front of us. <laughs> oh, that's a good Westie. Very nice Westie. Come here, baby. Oh, yes, yes. Beautiful West Slope, bigger than the first one. Bigger than the first one on the bullet lure, baby. Oh, the bobber's going down, bobber's going down too. The bobber's down as well. Oh, missed him, missed him. Oh, the grasshopper's still there though. Grasshopper's still there and he's kind of in one piece. Oh man, the, we should have let him munch it longer. Should have let him munch it longer. Wow, we almost doubled up there. All right, how about we just cast it out right back to that same spot. So in case that trout is still hanging out there, he'll often just come right back to it. Oh, the bar's down, bar's down. No, fish on baby, fish on. Oh my goodness, we still have one in the net, and here's another one. 
Oh, there we go. He couldn't resist that grasshopper. <laughs> oh, it's another, another beautiful, beautiful coastal. There's one chasing him. There's two coastals right there. No, that might be a kokanee. There might be a kokanee right next to us. Guys, this is crazy. This is crazy. There's another, no, I think it's another West Slope cutthroat. He's hanging out here. Now he's gone. Now he's gone. Uh, because he saw this one here the commotion and then he thought that there might be something for him to get that is crazy all right let's get this guy in the net too look at that we got a double in the net double trout in the net baby double trout in the net guys we're catching way too many fish here already this is insane look at that look at the blue back on the one on the left gorgeous color on that the hook from the bobber fish here is uh barely barely hooked there we go we could pop that out without even touching the fish uh, so he'll have a really good survival chance. So let's go ahead and let that one go again. There we go. He's out of there. This guy, uh, you know, he's been in the net for a little while. So, and uh, he's torn up a little bit at the mouth. We're going to go ahead and keep this fish right here. There we go. Put him out right away before even removing the hook. Oh yeah, he was hooked pretty good. There we go. Wow. Man, two fish in the bag uh, i think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take like give the, we're gonna give the fish a break i am so curious if this pulled beef got warm at all and that's a clear no not one single bit <laughs> i mean not even lukewarm man those heaters are toast completely toast in there all right we're just gonna dump these crawdads into the net here for one second because we're gonna just heat up that shredded uh, beef in the the pot there it smells really really good wow mm. that was good i mean you, you could just eat that cold for sure we're gonna warm it up though just a little bit Let's take a look at these uh, tortillas here. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, those are those are two nice quality tortillas. Probably not organic, but that's okay. I'd say the beef is nice and warm. I'm just gonna kind of. Heat those tortillas up a little bit. Give them a little toss over the flame here. Give them just a little bit of a char. Perfect. I'm just gonna throw some of this shredded meat right onto the tortillas here. There we go. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So much better warmed up. And we have this pack of beans here that I totally forgot about. So we're gonna throw the, uh, oh, it's like a chili. Oh, yes, chili and tacos. Man, this is one of the better MREs. It has to be, I've never had this one here before. All right, here's our jalapeno cheese spread. We're just gonna, <laughs> that cheese spread is so stiff. <laughs> Five-year-old cheese spread. Man, they sure didn't skimp on the cheese. That's a lot of cheese spread, more than I thought there was gonna be. Got a little bit of barbecue sauce. Probably don't even really need a whole lot of that. Be very careful with the barbecue sauce. Don't want to put on too much. This is already very intense flavor-wise. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, and then this bag right here is for our beverage. This lemon <laughs> beverage. Oh man, it's just like a weird sketchy powder. Be careful, I don't want to put too much in. I don't want to like accidentally overdo it. And uh, take our water. Oh, look how green and yellow that looks. <laughs> there we go, man, it looks really, really suspicious, guys. There's like clumps of sugar still in there. Let's go ahead and just try one of these little baby Baby tacos right here. Man, cheers. Military pulled pulled beef taco. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Wow, the meals in MREs are not always that good. That is fantastic, actually. Let's go ahead and try our beans. It's definitely a chili. Chili, I mean, it's a little spicy, actually. All right, let's go ahead and try. Oh, look how green this stuff is. All right, how, do you, how are you supposed to drink out of a bag like this? Just kind of... Oh, it's good. Oh, super refreshing. Whew, man, if we could still catch a kokanee uh, today, that would be absolutely awesome. So we're not gonna stop fishing until we get one. I didn't bring any other food besides that MRE, so from here on out, uh, it's all gonna be just what we can catch. All right, bottoms up, baby. All right, so something I really wanted to try was come over here and fish in these shallows and uh, see if there's anything over here. Cause I know that we saw them splash around. Oh, let's see, I'm not seeing any right now. There we go. Ooh, man, that was far out there. No way. Oh, oh I thought we had a bite like right away. One thing I'm noticing is the fish uh, in this lake do, when they hit it once, they do come back. I mean, these are very, very aggressive, uh, aggressive trout. <laughs> That's usually how these mountain trout are. Oh, there's a fish, there's a fish. Good one, good one, really good one. Oh my goodness. Oh, good fighter. Really good fighter. <laughs> All right, come on, baby. Come on. What are you? Ooh, a lot of color. Lot, a lot of color on that one. It's probably another West Slope cutty. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get this guy in the net here. Try and get a good release on him. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. Oh, jeez. Oh. oh, there's a crawdad here, too. Crawdad. Oh. Duh. Oh. Uh, gee, wait, I gotta net the fish. I gotta net the fish first. <laughs> oh, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful west slope. Here we go. Here we go. There's the crawdad, too. Oh, there we go. Double, <laughs> double crawdad and west slope. <laughs> Perfect. You spit the bullet lure. Gorgeous fish. Don't even need to touch them. We're just gonna let them out of the net. Come on, baby. There we go. There we go. There he is. Oh, Perfect release. Barely hooked. Uh, hmm. All right. What do we do with this crawdad, though? Ah, let's see here. Not a bad size, but the tail on him is really, really small. Ah, you know what? We got a couple. Let's go ahead and release this guy and see if we can get a bigger one. All right. I think what we're going to do is uh, move over to the deeper end of the lake and see if we can't catch some kokanee over there because it seems that it's all uh, cutthroat trout. Uh, over here, and I don't want to keep hooking the cutthroats uh, when really all I'm targeting is a kokanee. So, whew. man, the fishing's totally on fire here, though. That is amazing. Ah. Let's make sure that our crawdad, that yeah, we still got our crawdads right there in the pot, and then out here, <gasps> I've got the trout hanging right there by a stick so nothing takes them, and it's filled with crawdads over here. There's like three crawdads trying to eat our trout. All right, let's go ahead and sneak in here. See if we can't, oh, there's a big one right here. See that big one right there on the rock? Oh, 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 come here, buddy. Oh, I lost them all. They all got away. 
Okay, but they're coming for the uh, the trout there. I don't think they got to them, did they? Oh, you know what? No, they did nibble the tail just a little bit. Tiny little bit. That's okay. That's okay. We'll use our trout as bait to try and catch more crawdads. That would be awesome. So we'll uh, have to come back here and check in on those. All right, let's go ahead and keep moving uh, down the lake here. I want to get to where there's way deeper water. Uh, with the drone, I saw that uh, there's a steep drop off right over here and that's what I want to try and fish because I bet you anything that that's where the kokanee are hanging out. All right, right here, right here. This looks like a really, really good spot. Sinking, 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 sinking. I want to fish deep. I think the kokanee might be down deeper than the trout. Oh wow, still sinking, still sinking. Definitely deeper here. Oh, there's the bottom. That's probably a good 30, 40 feet deep or something. We're gonna do a slow, slow retrieve off the bottom. I did just see another crawdad right here. Look at that. Let's see if I can get him with my hand. Got him. Got him. Oh, he's trying to pinch me. Trying to pinch me. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Oh, not a bad tail on him. A little small overall. A little small, but we're going to go ahead and just release that guy. <laughs> oh, man, he swam right back to us. Oh, fish just splashed right over there. Right over there. You can still see the ripples. Oh, perfect cast. Perfect cast right over him. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on. Oh, hit it, hit it, he hit it. Come on back, come on back. Ah, he might have hooked up, might have hooked up. That spooked him. Dang, I saw him grab it and shake his head there once. Right, there we go, all the way on the bottom. Oh, there you go, fish on, fish on, something from the bottom. This guy's from down deep, come on, baby. Come on, stay on, stay on. Doesn't feel huge, does not feel huge, but that's okay, kokanee are usually pretty small. Oh, come on, come on, I see him. We got color, baby, we got color. Oh, I think it is, I think it is. It's very silvery, very silvery. Come here, baby, come here, come. What is that, what is that, what is that? Come here, come here. In the day, it's another. <laughs> Another West Slope cutthroat. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this guy out here. He's a small, small West Slope cutthroat. He just hasn't developed his colors yet. <laughs> there we go. He popped right off. Oh, you had me excited, buddy. My goodness, look how cute that little guy is right there. All right, he can go right out of the net. There he goes. <laughs> oh, there's the crawdad. There's the crawdad. You want that bullet lure, don't you? Oh, didn't get him, didn't get him. Let's try again, let's try again. There he attacked, oh, got him, got him, got him, got him. Got the crawdad, yes, by the claw, look at that. That's a nice crawdad. There we go, look at that, got him right there in the corner of the claw. Oh, he de-hooked himself. That was so convenient. Look at the claws on this guy. <laughs> oh man, this guy's ready for the pot. <laughs> Just make sure it's not a female, no eggs down there underneath the tail, otherwise we'd let her go. But look at this, beautiful, beautiful crawdad. Right, let's see how many crawdads are munching on our trout. Oh, there's so many crawdads over there. There are so many. We're gonna put this guy here into our, oh my goodness, look, the other one got out. That one there got out. Get back in the pot. There are so many down there by the trout. Just look at that. I mean, it's just filled with them. They're all over the trout. There's got to be maybe... Uh, <laughs> there's like eight or nine of them. Oh, there's one that's just coming up right here. He's a big one. He's a big one. Oh, 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 oh. He saw us, he saw us. He saw us. He knows what's up. We might need the net to get him, guys. Oh, 
Oh, look, look, look at him. Oh, I almost got pinched by the big one. I got, <laughs> look at how many crawdads we got here. Let's see if we can get that one too. Yes, we got that one too. We got the big one as well. <laughs> Look at that one swipe with the net. Three, four, five, six crawdads in one swipe with the net. That's the most crawdads I've ever gotten at once. <laughs> There's a couple of really, I mean, look at these guys. A couple of really big ones in there. Oh man, this one here. Oh. Look at that crawdad. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of those claws. Each claw has as much meat as the entire tail. Yeah, I don't know if I should just let them eat my trout down there. <laughs> I'll probably uh, clean those guys out and we can dump the guts right there and that'll attract more crawdads. This fish here has uh, some eggs in it and we're gonna try and just use those eggs as bait under the bobber so i'm gonna go ahead and set those aside all right let's try and put these trout eggs on the hook and we'll just see what happens We have some water right here, just from the lake, and uh, we're just gonna start boiling that for our crawfish. Get that to a nice rolling boil. All right, I just grabbed a couple of, uh, of the big crawdads, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and, let's see, we need to season the water somehow. How about we just use a little bit of that, that leftover barbecue sauce? <laughs> There we go, barbecue, barbecue crawdad boil. One, two, three, there we go. And he's already out, that's how fast it goes when you dump him head first. All right, we're gonna give them just a, just a couple of minutes in there. Uh, fish just attacked the bobber down here. No, we got one, we got one. <laughs> no way, no way. We, we just got a trout on, uh, on those eggs. I'm gonna release them. That's amazing. So catching trout on their own eggs is totally possible. I've heard that from you guys in the comments. Ooh, wow, we're boiling here. I heard that from you guys saying that in the comments to use the guts of the trout again and again for years and I haven't tried it out. So I finally tried it. Man, so thank you guys for that advice. That's absolutely awesome. It worked out like a charm. And I think these crawdads, man, they are, they are done, done, done. <laughs> it's just a neon, just a neon bag. Look at that. All right, time to get some butter into the pan. Oh no, oh, so lucky it did not. I mean, what were the odds of that landing like that? The butter didn't go anywhere. Sometimes you gotta count your blessings right there. growing on me. It's really not that bad actually. Tastes like a cheap, cheap Gatorade or something. The crawdads have done a number on our trout. Um, <laughs> yeah, they nibbled a little bit. I've got claw marks all over it, but that's okay. I'm not that worried about it. In order to fit it into the pan though, we're gonna have to, oh yeah, we're gonna have to cut this baby in half.
thick piece in the pan first. And then the little guy here with the tail. All right, I've got our only seasoning here, a little vial of Danish sea salt. And we are going to sprinkle it quite generously all over the trout. Oh, that looks amazing. Here, a little more. We've been sweating a bunch. We can afford to, to eat some salt. That salt there has so many more minerals in it than just sodium. Uh, it's from a little tiny island in Denmark uh, where part of my family comes from, and they make that salt right there in these seaweed huts uh, over a wood fire. It's absolutely the best salt in the world. Oh man, is it too dark to, oh, nope, nope, it's still working out. I've got like, I don't have the right light for the GoPro and we're just rolling with it, but it's another catch and cook. Another catch and cook ending in the dark. <laughs> uh, but guys, I have some amazing news to give you. I'm gonna be in Germany. I'm visiting my hometown. It's gonna be my dad's 70th birthday and he still lives in the small town where I grew up. I haven't been back to Germany since probably about 2018, so I'm super just looking forward to getting back uh, to uh, my old hometown. I'll, I'm gonna film an episode over in Germany. I already worked with the fishing authorities over there to arrange for a fishing license. It's a lot harder in Germany uh, to get your fishing license, especially if you live there. All you German fans, you know how exclusive fishing can be in Germany, but I figured out as a tourist, even though I grew up there since now I live in the US, I can get a tourist uh, fishing license in Germany quite easily. So I've got a great idea. We're gonna try and do a catch and cook in my old hometown. I'm gonna show you the old stomping grounds where I grew up and got into this whole whole fishing thing. All right. Oh, oh man, butter to the eye. Oh, 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 geez. It's hot. It's hot, baby. Let's go ahead and flip this trout over. It wants to so bad. Oh, the butter is just bubbling. Happy bubbling butter. And the trout is golden brown, guys. It's golden brown. It's a piece of art. I have some advice for you. Don't get hot bubbling butter into your eye. <laughs> It'll be all right. Let's go ahead and see if there's some crawdads down in the water eating the fish guts. I bet you anything that there's tons of them down here. <gasps> oh, look at it, it's a giant crawdad ball. It's a ball of crawdads. There's, I don't even know how many there are right there. Thirty crawdads or something eating the guts right there. I mean, one of the gut piles is already gone. They finished it off, and that one's right there. Maybe we can get a big one. Oh man! Oh, look at this guy here. This guy's huge. Oh, oh, giant, giant crawdad. <laughs> In the net he goes. I don't think I'll be able to resist, guys. I might have to stock up on some crawdads uh, while I'm up here in the mountains. Just look at that, another one in the net with him. Look at this, we can just pick, hand pick all the big crawdads, all the big ones. Oh my goodness. Look at this, we have to like push the little ones out of the way to get, oh, there's a big one right in between there. Look at this guy, giant crawdad in the net. So many crawdads. Oh, 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 giant, giant crawdad. Look at the size of this thing. Just look at this guy. My, oh no, they're getting out of the net. Getting out of the net. Look at this. <laughs> crawdad limit, baby. <laughs> Small claws. We'll let that one go again. Oh, there are just, I mean, there are crawdads all over the place. Look at them. Look at them all. There are so many crawdads. <laughs> this might be uh, the new crawdad heaven. That's one thing at a lot of these mountain lakes is they do have uh, good crawdad populations in them and they come out at night especially. 
but this might be the most that I've ever seen. This is probably the most crawdads I've ever seen in my life. Ooh, there's a really good one over here. And he's coming up to the light. Don't go to the light, buddy. Don't go to the light. It's all right, focus on the light. Got him. Got him. Really nice one. Really, really nice one. Oh, there's a huge one underneath the bag. Oh, oh, he's a little scary. That, oh my. Oh, guys, it's a freak crawdad. It's a freak. Look at this. This thing is giant. I mean, this guy's got a good, like a, man, maybe a seven, eight inch wingspan on him. <laughs> oh, into the net you go. Oh man, guys, we've got crawdads for days. Uh, what I'm just gonna do with those guys is keep them alive, maybe snack on a few more of them tomorrow, but I'm gonna bring a nice batch of crawdads uh, back to the, the mountain farm with me uh, so I can just have a nice crawdad boil at home. Let's go ahead and take a peek. Oh, oh it smells phenomenal. We're gonna let that trout cool down for just one second, uh, but I can't resist snacking on one of these crawdads. Look how delicious these guys here look. What you can do is uh, pop off one of these claws here. There we go. Ooh, here we go, here we go. Look at that piece of crawdad claw meat. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now we didn't salt it or anything. All we did was uh, we used that, that barbecue sauce in it. So usually if I were to do uh, crawdads, uh, I would do like a lot more seasoning and some salt, some onions, some butter. But this is pretty good. Oh, this is definitely a bigger claw right here. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness, can you see that? Big old crawdad pincher. Mmm, 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 yes. We're just gonna do with the crawdad head here. I'll suck it real quick. <laughs> no, I don't know, man, I don't know. I'm not into the crawdad head sucking. We're just gonna throw that into the water because I bet you anything that the other crawdads, they'll eat that crawdad there too. There we go, here's the tail top you always have this little dark thing right there that little guy that's the crawdad poop we don't want to eat that but there's the tail right there mm, mm. very mild very very mild but super tasty there we go tail number two cheers mm. all right let's go ahead and dig into this fish here. We're gonna go with that little piece. There's the tail, guys, the trout tail. Good tail. Ooh, very good one, buttery. Totally delicious. Guys, the meat on these trout is really, really firm. It's uh, It was a little orange, it still is. It just has a little bit of that salmon color going for it. And um, the flavor is, just fantastic. All that we did was we sprinkled some of that salt on there, but that together with the butter and the crispy skin, it just doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Mm, so tender. The bones just come, come right off of the meat. We just made sure to do all of our eating and fish cleaning and stuff away from the tent. Uh, we don't want to do that right in camp just because we are in, in bear country and wolf country and mountain lion country and coyote country. <laughs> we just don't want to bring wildlife uh, right into our camp uh, at night, especially not the bears. Bears really like smelly stuff, so we're going to keep all that stuff down here uh, away from the tent. On our accessory pouch, we still have a moist towelette. <laughs> That'll be perfect to clean up our hands. Mm, smells nice and fresh. Oh yeah, there we go. And for dessert, a couple pieces of gum. 
right in here. We'll save one for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's like a, like a mint flavor. Not bad. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Oh, finally in the tent. the headlamp it is actually really nice and warm out so I think I'm gonna sleep uh, really good tonight now if I do still end up catching kokanee tomorrow then I will turn that into like a second part of this episode right here otherwise I'll see you all very soon at a ultra high elevation uh, mountain lake that I'm gonna try and climb up to it'll be the highest mountain lake that I've ever been trout fishing at before of course I'm bringing the backpacking the camping and the cooking gear along and I'll film an episode there for you guys. So if you guys are still new and don't want to miss that one, then of course hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way you guys don't miss that adventure and uh, leave a comment on this video here. I'll see you guys in the comment section. Drop a like, it helps a ton. And we'll see you all very soon for the next fishing adventure. And until then, you all know it, fish on baby. Oh man, I can turn off all of these lights. No, you're green, what the? Oh geez, just turn off. Oh, they, oh, nope, there we go. Oh, finally. <laughs>